Hello, my name is Peter Song. I'm a developer advocate for JDBC at Oracle. In this video, I'm going to go over how to connect an Oracle database to Spring Boot using JDBC. This video is part three of a Getting Started series, so I recommend watching episodes one and two if you haven't already. Here are the resources that I'll use in this video. I'll be using an Oracle Autonomous database with a table called Students that I have created beforehand. I'll also be using the database username and password along with the OJDBC jar, which can be pulled from Maven Central. I'll also be utilizing Spring Data JPA to query the data from the database. Now that we know which resources we'll be using, let's get started. First file I'm looking at is pom.xml. We have four dependencies here. Spring Data JPA and Spring Boot Starter Web are taken from Spring Initializer. We simply have to select those dependencies when creating our Spring Boot application. The third dependency is the OJDBC jars that are pulled from Maven Central. To see how to do that, please look at episode one in our Getting Started series. Now, the last dependency here is automatically generated for us when we create our Spring Boot application, so we don't have to worry about that. Next, let's take a look at our application.properties file. This is the file that Spring Boot looks for by default to see your application's properties. You can include whatever you want in here and refer to it in your Spring Boot application. This is where we will put the database connection information. For the first line, we specify the type of driver. Spring is capable of connecting to many different databases using different drivers. So we must tell Spring that we are using the Oracle JDBC driver. Next, we provide the path to the wallet location. As we can see, the wallet is located in JDBC vid underscore series folder. And the name of the wallet is wallet underscore ADB PS. After the at, we simply give the database alias name. And all of this together gives us our JDBC URL. The next two lines specify the database username and database password to connect to the database. Next, I provide the dialect to be used by JPA. If you are using a database that is 12C or greater, then you must use Oracle 12C dialect. Next, the UCP properties. UCP is recommended for larger scale applications to take advantage of faster connection times. You can specify the details for your connection pool. And here I've just used the default settings. Now that this is done, let's take a look at the student model. The student class simply maps the student object in our Spring Boot application to the student table in the Oracle database. As we can see, I refer to the column name, first name, last name, and the ID. If we look over at our database, it also has ID, first name, and last name. Here, we also can see that we have two, uh, two rows in this table, John Doe and Jane Doe. Next, we generate the getters and setters and the two string function. And now let's take a look at the repository. So I've defined an interface here that extends the JPA repository. We can take advantage of many built-in queries provided to us by using the JPA repository. Next, let's take a look at student service. This is a very simple student service class with one method called find all. Student repository or student service uses student repository, which is an extension of JPA repository. So all we have to do is say return students and students is just, just calls find all method of the student repository. Then in controller, we use the find all method of our student service to return all the students in a list. We have a get mapping here and this just maps to the endpoint slash students. So if we hit this slash students endpoint, we should see John Doe and Jane Doe. Let's run the application to see if this works. So it looks like our application is up and running. Let's test the slash students endpoint to see if we can see John Doe and Jane Doe. Here we see two rows returned to us. John Doe and Jane Doe. So our database connection was successful. In this video, I went over how to connect to the Oracle database using JDBC and Spring Boot. 
Thank you.